Hello, listeners. Welcome to Simply Explained English, the podcast where we break down the English language into easy to understand pieces. I'm Lisa. And I'm Eric. Whether you're learning English as a second language or just brushing up on your skills, we're here to help you grasp English simply and effectively. In each episode, we'll explore a new word, phrase, or common English expression, making sure you can understand and use them confidently in your daily conversations. So, grab your notebooks and let's get started with today's words. Okay, what are the words today, Eric? The first word today is mad. Then we will continue with obvious and to offer, then to grow up. The final one is pull someone's leg. Can you explain what mad means, Eric? Mad is an adjective. When someone is mad, they are very angry. But in informal English, especially in American English, mad can also mean crazy or very enthusiastic about something. That's right, Eric. For example, you can say, are you still mad at me? Or Mark got really mad at Richard for not washing up. Maybe you have noticed that if we use somebody after mad, we use at like at me or at Richard in your examples. Yes, I have. But in this sentence, we don't have to use at because we won't use somebody after mad. For example, he was mad when he found out that someone hit his car. Absolutely, Lisa. Mad means very angry in those sentences. But the meaning of mad in this sentence is different. She is mad about the new superhero movies. In this sentence, mad means she really loves them. She's very enthusiastic. Yes, and it's important to note that when you use mad about, it usually means being enthusiastic. Now let's listen to a sample dialogue using the word mad. Why is Kevin not coming to the cinema? Oh, he's mad because he lost his phone today. That's too bad. He's also mad about sci-fi movies. He'll miss a great one tonight. Yes, he told me last week how excited he was for this movie. In this dialogue, the first mad means Kevin is angry. And the second mad shows that he really likes sci-fi movies. It's a good example of how versatile the word mad can be in English. Lisa, have you ever been mad about something? Oh, absolutely. I was mad about ballet when I was younger. I used to dance every day after school. How about you, Eric? I've definitely been mad in both senses. As a kid, I was mad about video games, and I was mad at my favorite team when they lost a match. Oh, you use mad in two different meanings, Eric? Yes, Lisa. In the first sentence, what I meant was that I liked video games very much. And in the second, I was very angry when my team lost. It sounds like mad can describe a lot of our feelings and interests. Remember, listeners, mad can show strong emotions like anger or excitement. That's right. And I think we have explained mad fair enough, Lisa. Okay, Eric, let's move on to our next word. What's the next word? The next word is obvious. 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 Obvious is an adjective. When something is obvious, it means it's very clear or easy to understand or see. If you say the answer is obvious, it means the answer is very easy to find or understand. Another example is, it was obvious he didn't study for the test because he couldn't answer any questions. This means it was very clear he didn't study because of his wrong answers. Those are good examples. You know, sometimes we use obviously as an adverb, like saying, obviously she's the best player on the team, meaning it's very clear she's the best. Or we obviously need more help, meaning it's very clear we need more help. Useful examples, Lisa. Now, let's use obvious in a sample dialogue to understand it better. Did you notice anything unusual about the suspect's behavior? It was obvious that he was nervous. He was sweating and couldn't look us in the eye. You're right. It's obvious he's hiding something. We need to investigate more. That's a great example, Lisa. It shows how we can use obvious to describe something that is clear to understand. Definitely. 
Hey Eric, have you ever been in a situation where something was obvious to you, but not to others? Yes, I have. When I was playing a video game with my friends, the solution to a puzzle was obvious to me, but they couldn't find it out. It took them a while to see what I saw. That must have been frustrating for you. I've had similar experiences where I noticed something obvious, but others didn't. Sometimes it can be hard to explain something. Absolutely. It's like trying to describe the color blue to someone who has never seen it. It's just so obvious to you, but not to them. That's a great analogy, Eric. Something might be obvious to one person, but it may not be obvious to another. That's so true, Lisa. We all have different perspectives and experiences. Well said, Eric. That's all for the word obvious. Let's continue with the next word. The next word is to offer. To offer. To offer. It's a verb. When you offer something, it means you give or propose something to someone which they can accept or refuse. That's a helpful explanation, Eric. For example, you can say, she offered me a cup of tea. It means she proposed to give me a cup of tea and I could say yes or no. Exactly, Lisa. And another example is, he offered to help me with my homework. This shows he proposed his help which I could accept or not. Great example. And notice listeners, if you use a verb after offer, you should use the infinitive form, like in the second example where Eric used offer to help. Now, let's look at a sample dialogue using the word offer. Did you hear about the new job opening at the library? Yes, I did. I'm thinking about applying. That's great. I can offer to prepare your application before you send it. That would be fantastic. Thanks for offering. It is a useful dialogue. It shows how to use offer in a dialogue. That's right, Lisa. Offering something can be a kind way to show support or friendship. Speaking of which, Lisa, have you ever offered something unusual or unexpected to someone? Oh, yes. Once I offered to do a painting for my friend's class. I'm not a professional, but I wanted to help her space. What about you, Eric? I once offered to cook dinner for my family. It was a surprise because I rarely cook, but it went well. That sounds lovely, Eric. It shows how offering can also be a way to share new experiences with others. Remember listeners, you can offer help, a gift, or even an experience, just like in our examples. I think we have explained to offer fair enough. Let's move on to the next word. The next word is to grow up. To grow up. To grow up. It means to become older and more mature, both physically and mentally. That's right, Eric. When you grow up, you change from being a child to an adult. For example, when I grow up, I want to be a teacher. Here's another example. My parents always tell me to act more responsibly now because I'm growing up. Sometimes people also use it to tell someone to act more maturely. Like saying, stop being silly and grow up. Good examples, Lisa. Now let's have a sample dialogue to show how we can use grow up in a conversation. Look at you, Sarah. You've grown up so much since I last saw you. Thanks, Grandpa. I'm not a little girl anymore. I'm growing up and learning new things every day. I can see that. You're becoming a lovely young woman. Always remember, no matter how much you grow up, you'll always be my little girl. What a sweet example, Eric. As we get older, our bodies and minds change. This example shows that grow up can be used to describe these changes. Definitely, it's a process everyone experiences. Hey, Lisa, what did you want to be when you were growing up? When I was growing up, I wanted to be a veterinarian because I loved animals. How about you, Eric? I wanted to be an astronaut and explore space. Obviously, that didn't happen, but it was fun to dream about it as a child. It's amazing how our dreams and wants change as we grow up. It's all part of the journey. Absolutely. Growing up is not always easy, but it's a necessary part of life. We learn so much along the way. 
That's so true, Eric. Well, that's all for the phrase to grow up. And it is time to explain our last word today. What is the last word today, Eric? The last word is pull someone's leg. Pull someone's leg. Pull someone's leg. It's an idiom that means to joke with someone in a playful way. If you are trying to convince them that something is true as a joke, you can use the informal phrase pull someone's leg. That's right, Eric. When you pull someone's leg, you're not being serious. You're just trying to make them believe something that isn't true, usually for fun. For example, don't believe him when he says he can speak 10 languages. He's just pulling your leg. Here's another example. I told my little brother that the moon was made of cheese. I was just pulling his leg, but he believed me. Great examples, Eric. It's important to remember that pull someone's leg is an idiom, so it doesn't literally mean to pull on someone's leg physically. Thanks for clarifying that, Lisa. Now, let's have a sample dialogue to show how we can use pull someone's leg in a conversation. Hey, Mary, did you hear that our boss is going to give everyone a huge raise? Really? That's amazing. No, I'm just pulling your leg, April Fools. Oh, John, you really had me going there for a second. I should have known you were pulling my leg, especially on April Fool's Day. That's a great example of how pull someone's leg can be used in a playful way, especially on a day like April Fool's Day. Definitely. It's a fun way to joke around with friends and family. Hey, Lisa, has anyone ever pulled your leg? Oh, yes. My older sister used to pull my leg all the time when we were kids. She once convinced me that I could fly if I rode a carpet. That's hilarious. Did, did you actually try it? Yes, I did. But the carpet did not fly. But I learned not to believe everything my sister told me. That's a good lesson. It's important to know when someone is pulling your leg and when they're serious. Absolutely. It's all about understanding the context and the person's tone of voice. Well said, Lisa. And... That wraps up another episode of Simply Explained English. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you found our explanations helpful and clear. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. We love helping you improve your English one podcast at a time. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, please send them our way. We're here to help you learn. Until next time, keep practicing and remember... We're just an episode away if you need help understanding English simply and effectively. Bye, everyone. See you in the next podcast.